All right, good morning, ladies. I just wanted to talk today before I head out with my uh, guy and the neighborhood kids. We're gonna have a special trip today. So, um, yeah, so last night I was talking about divorce, and then in my last video I talked about praying throughout the night, praying throughout the morning, and you will be so refreshed if you take things to God. So I was just like, why God? Why are you allowing me to go through this divorce? Looking back at the last year, I'm like, God didn't make a mistake. There's no mistake. I mean, he brought me here. He let me go through a post abortive care class, um, have a good church, um, just a lot of good things we have been blessed with. So he doesn't make mistakes. And he also has this under control too. <clears throat> and even though it may be difficult to navigate it, you know you can trust God. So for example, last night, <coughs> excuse me, after my husband was like, you know, don't ever talk, you know, we're done, um, Melissa, and um, goodbye kind of thing. He also said, you're pushing me away, which I forgot to put in the video last night that he actually said this. And I responded as he tried to flip the table. I responded and said, actually, look at what you've done. You're pushing me away. Um, so there was a sense of kind of him opening up saying you're pushing me away. But yet it was very confusing because he's saying we're done and it really doesn't matter, right? if I'm holding him accountable because he says he's done. He did this before too. He was like, I have, you know, I've moved on. And then I'm like, well, I've moved on. And he stopped and he was like, what do you mean you moved on? So there's this confusion. And um, a guy who loves you isn't going to bring confusion and clarity and chaos into your life. He's going to bring clarity. He's not going to want to burden you. He's going to want to solve things for you. Um, so I pretty much after dealing with the reality in a video of saying, you know, he'll never be my best friend again. He'll never be my friend. I told him that, um, I said last night, I pretty much got everything off my chest and I showed him some tough love and I'm like, you are the scum of the earth. No man leaves his wife for no good reason in his sons. He has pretty good sons. His sons, I mean, one of them was kind of going the wrong way, but He's straightening out and um, he's got good sons. They didn't do anything wrong. They are very good sons and he just, you know, he just left. There was one other thing, kind of small with my other son, but yeah. So um, he left his beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful sons. He had it all. And I said to him, you have made the biggest mistake of your life. You are going to live with this for the rest of your life. You despise men who do this, but yet you do it yourself. You left your family. And um, he's not in his right mind right now to be doing this. There is something else going on. And um, <clears throat> I came to the conclusion this morning, sometimes, you know, things can get tough sometimes. And through the night, you know, you're going to God and he will answer you and then in the morning maybe you've cried at night and that's not what I'm saying but maybe you've gone through a night of um you know symbolically a night of trials but in the morning there's joy so that's kind of what's going on now I've gone through a year of um you know him neglecting us abandoning us not wanting to communicate um so now I have the joy. I have the victory. You will always have victory in life, always as a Christian. No matter what comes your way, nobody will be able to get victory over you because you are a Christian. So um, as a Christian woman, you know, the victory is mine. Um, and it is for him too, if he's truly a Christian. Um, but right now I see his loyalty to God not there. I don't see a commitment um, I see him definitely going the wrong way. And sometimes you're trying to show tough love to help somebody straighten out. But I did say goodbye. I said, your number is now blocked. I have shut all doors to us. Um, you will not be communicating through the boys to me. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> still have a little cough. You will not be um, 
you'll not be a part of my life anymore. You chose this and goodbye forever. <clears throat> this is after 46 years of, be, you know, having my husband in my life. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how it is. I mean, a time limit is always something you want to have, ladies. You always want to have some kind of time limit to be like, this guy can't make up his mind and this is the way it's going to be. If you can't make up your mind by here, you know, I'm having a hearing next week, so he can't make up his mind. And this will either make it, he's going to be like, yep, I'm definitely sure, or it's going to make him turn around and be like, wait a minute, she just was like serious, you know, she just said this. So um, when a guy wants to come back, uh, I told him don't come back. That's what I told him. I said, don't even come back. Um, usually they want to see if you're still stupid or they thought the grass was greener on the other side and you don't have to put up with that. So um, for me, I said, you know, with God, I'm like, God, why are you doing this? And he is for my good. It's for my good. He wants me in a healthier relationship. I am somebody who has a Christ-like love for people. I get along with everybody pretty much. I mean, unless someone's saying things to me that they shouldn't. Um, you know, pretty much you respect me, I'll respect you. And I'm just a, you know, all around pretty nice girl. So, I mean, I can put up with quite a bit too because I have a love for people that um, sometimes I can put up with a little bit too much. But um, at this point in my life, he's just saying, Melissa, I'm protecting you. God is protecting me. He's providing, he's loving, he's leading. Don't ever submit to a man who is not submitted to God. So in church, I used to hear submit to your husband and I thought, okay, I'll submit pretty easy, right? Just do what you're told. And a lot of times when you do that, your heart won't be there. You're supposed to submit to one another. I heard a teaching on this and thought it was good. You're supposed to be pouring into one another and helping each other in life, right? The same amount of energy. You want to match each other. Um, and then there is a place in the Bible for the wife to actually submit to the husband. And that is not, you know, submitting just blindly. It's trusting his leadership and giving him the lead of the marriage because you trust him. But yet he's supposed to be submitted to God. And when you have a man who will not submit to God and he will not look out for your best, as in Christ is always looking out for your best and that's how a husband should be. He should be looking out for your best when he's leading. Um, that is the ideal situation. And sometimes, you know, husbands make mistake, their mistakes, they are harsh, etc. And you can try to work with that and work around it, even if they're harsh. The Bible talks about still submit to a husband if he's harsh. But when he's asking you to do things that are wrong or he's just being a jerk to you, you don't have to submit to that. And as a woman, one of the things we want to give to men is our submission. Um, and we also want to give to them, because they're men who, you know, do, 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 they're in that mindset. We want to have open communication with them. We want to bring balance to them um, by being open and by um, being vulnerable with them. But that is a man who is earning this and being a good, a good husband, right? So there's a lot of gray in between that you got to work with. So in my situation. Um, I told my husband, you know, basically I hope he grows up and he addresses the trauma in his past and his issues. So that's what I got for now. And don't be afraid, ladies, of standing for yourself and having a higher standard instead of compromising to a lower standard.